political parties that are here, especially the leadership of the ANC, represented by members of the NEC and former members of the NEC, PEC members, members of various RECs in our province, and our alliance structures, including our leagues, leadership of government, ministers, deputy ministers, MECs, MMCs, and all that we should adhere to the time allocated and we should observe all the relevant COVID protocols and ensure that by the time we leave here, we don't leave this place in an embarrassing situation. So I'll politely request all of us to rise so that the police can lead us with the national anthem. Good morning. May I start by expressing my condolences to the family Yantate Tabo, my Emo Masebe, in particular Bana Bantate 
Masebe Lime Wabona. We are here, I would like to say, to be with you in your loss. And I believe that the Lord will be with you and keep you as he has done this far. May I recognize the former Deputy President Lemme um, and then the Premier of Houghton Province, the ministers who are here, MECs, MMECs, mayors, and everybody, I just want to recognize you. And um, that uh, Panyaza has already done the protocols. My task now is to open this service with a word of prayer as we send off this servant of the people. The sermon will come later. Let us pray. O oh God, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, although we know that Ribafiti Molifati. Although we also know that no one has lived forever on this earth, we are not able to accept this reality of a loss because it was never your original plan. Whenever death strikes us, God, we end up with a deep, pain that is inexplicable because we just human as our creator you know better our feelings umagunje kulunkulu we rely entirely on you because we are not human we we you are not a human being but you are god you are a God who is all-knowing, everywhere present, and powerful. You know the depth of our pain, especially the family, and know exactly what to do to take the pain away, heal our wounds, and empower us to move on into the future, especially for the family. In Psalm 147, 3, it says, You heal the brokenhearted and you bind up their wounds. Heal their broken hearts and bind their wounds. We also pray for the victims of the floods in KwaZulu Natal and in the Eastern Cape and other places, and the fires in the Western Cape. Be with them as well, wherever they are. Strengthen them to go over the pain they're going through. Be with us in this service. Let it be part of the therapy to heal all of us. Strengthen the family to walk this last journey, Linda Temasebe, as the beloved of the people and the family. Bless everyone who will be taking part in this service and the burial service and use each one of them as your instrument to console the family and lessen their grief. We ask all this in your holy name. Amen. Rally Le ge ba ratile bogwe. 
As earlier indicated, we remain deeply touched by our presence and countless messages of support that we continue to receive. On behalf of the Houghton Provincial Government and the Masebe family, we appreciate deeply so your presence and the willingness to work with us as we prepare to send our beloved DG, father, uncle, and comrade to his final resting place. We are grateful that the South African government has accepted our request as the Houghton government through the office of our premier to honor Comrade Tabo Maemo Masebe with a special official provincial funeral. As we prepare to begin our journey, kindly accept our sincerest condolences on behalf of government and all institutions that have sent their messages to us. We still politely and respectfully so plead with you to observe all COVID protocols at all times. We are now moving to the next part of the reading of the obituary and we'll be requesting Mr. Joe Matebula and a family representative Mema Shlodi Chaoke to come and read the obituary. And my children, the Arivo Am Chimzam Shumo, Candito Mengauri Kamsanda, Butchla Pala, Kakamer, Tindindia Mits and Baronga Sham, Nakam Tawa Masewe. The obituary program director, having acknowledge the protocol will start as follows when Tabo Masewe passed on we received many messages amongst those messages was a poem by Makulu Lidwaba it is in your package. It reads thus. It is a deadly dark cloud saturated to the brim with thunder and lightning waiting for the ideal moment to arrive, to flood the pathways and highways, just, just to add to the pain the nation endures because of vengeance of the saturated dark no wonder these heavy dark clouds hang a stone throw above our hearts the land takes a dropping friend and family succumb to the demonic wish of the saturated dark some 
watch in disbelief, others don't. Tabo watched and saw the destructive power of a natural. Who knows perhaps the power of a natural force was just too heavy to watch and unable to help. How much of that pain was the cause of the resurgence of a rage in his inner body because of the distance between him and the victims? Timen, a towering soul, never touched from head to toe by opulence, always on the march, on the straight and narrow, to serve, to suffer, to sacrifice, even when the dark clouds uh, saturated and cloud hung inches above his head. The obituary says during the early evening of the 18th April 2022, our beloved Comrade Tau Masebe suddenly and unexpectedly left us. Not surprisingly, Masebe died with his boots on, with the principal tool of trade, the laptop close by. The outpouring grief and tributes by all who came in contact with him is a testimony to the impactful life of a leader of our people who was well respected and loved. Tabo Masebe represented the best of a generation, an age cohort, which then the then president Oliver Reginald Tambo named the Young Lions of our struggle. It is this generation born at the height of apartheid who, ins who instead of being yoked by the oppressive system chose to define their generational mission as that of defeating this crime against humanity and ushering in the freedom in our lifetime. Tabo Masebe was born at Elim Hospital on the third uh, on the third, uh, the third born of the late Elias Chamano and Miss Elsie Chiriro Masebe on the 25th August 1964. The family stayed at Mashau village until they relocated to Shingwezi and then to Muletlane where he started his primary school at Machumu uh, Primary school and proceeded to Shikane high, uh, uh, high primary school, then Ch Chitakekana junior secondary school and matriculated at Matladi primary school respectively. He studied, he studied at the University of Venda where he soon became conscientized and politicized, joining the Azanian student movement Azaso now known as Sasko, a towering intellectual. He was able to combine the theory learned in classes with the concrete conditions of a country that was changing. The mid, -late, the mid to late 80s was a time where universities were in time all. Students were frequently persecuted for fighting for their rights and their political activities in opposition to the evil system of apartheid but were never deterred and they put up a formidable resistance. Comrade Tavo was part of a machinery that ensured apartheid and its Bantustan administration were rendered ungovernable. He led from the front in mobilizing the youth in action against the Venda, Gazankulu, and Libua government. He played a key role in the formation of various structures, organs of people's power in the Northern Transvaal, mobilizing workers, youth, and communities. He was part of the Northern Transvaal Action Committee, the Northern Transvaal People uh, Public Servants Union, Muluedi, 
and many other community-based structures. Comrade Taba was able to straddle across various generations, ensuring that the youth are taught and trained in correct politics of the Congress movement. Always a humble cadre, Tabo played an important role in the activities of the Pitan Chaveling Unit, recruiting many young people into the movement. He became part of the Northern Transvaal Youth Congress Notaiko and was central in the activities of the United Democratic Front Northern Transvaal. When it was time to re-establish and rebuild the ANC, in the Northern Transvaal, again, Comrade Tavo proved to be equal to the task. It was a task that requires the organizing ability and skills of the likes of Tavo Masebe, Mutupi Parepare, Louis Mguni, Joyce Mabudafas, George Padagi, and many others. Tavo understood his station in society and the role he played in society. Like many young people of his age group, he sacrificed selflessly his own education. Comrade Tavo made it his mission to champion the access to education through the Education Aid Program, EAP, particularly to those who were brutalized by the apartheid regime. Comrade Masebe ensured that Bazari support to many student activists who today are senior professionals and senior public servants and public officials. To this end, Comrade Tabo acquitted himself very well in ensuring that the branches of the African National Congress and these structures are launched in the entire Northern Transvaal. He became part of the process of integrating comrades from exile, from prison, the underground, into the structures, and ensuring that the Northern Transvaal become a united and cohesive region. Like others of his generation, Comrade Tavo knew that before he could become a student, he was a member of the oppressed community. He became active in building and growing the youth and student congresses uh, and was central to the formation of the South African Youth Congress cycle. Launched in the heart of the state of emergency in Cape Town, in 1987. Comrade Tavo rose to the ranks, through the ranks of Psycho in the de then Northern Transvaal. His generation was in instrumental in building and consolidating the United Democratic Front, as earlier stated. Along the then Young Lions, namely Jeremiando. Kassel Matale, Eugene Masiti, and main, uh, Elek Nchaveling, and many others. He was part of the leadership of the Northern Transvaal in the 1990s, who, after the unbanning, took the debate on the relaunch of the ANC Youth League forward. It, is, it was this debate that saw Psycho Congress in 1990 in Kanya Mazan, resolved not only to complement the soon to unfold process, for, process of negotiations uh, with mass struggles, but also to rebuild the African National Congress Youth League into a formidable force and the voice of the South African youth. Comrade Tawo and his peers had to traverse across the country to convince young people to accept the decision of the movement to suspend the armed struggle. This was a difficult call to many young revolutionaries at the time. 
the provisional youth committee led by Peter Mukaba, Rapumlekane, with comrades from the youth section travels the length and breadth of the country to organize and relaunch the ANC Youth League branches. In the Northern Transvaal, they, fo they found a well-oiled machinery led by Comrade Tavo and others. Their comrades were the, the comrades also hosted the relaunching of the ANC Youth League in Kwandebele in 1991. It's very important for the young ones because there are two activities between the Kanyamazane and Kwandebele that happened at the time. We have always seen that these are used interchangeably. Program director, I thought I must emphasize that point. In his role as a leader of young people in the Northern Transvaal, Comrade Tabo enabled the Congress Youth League to combine both rural and urban struggles. He helped to clarify the progressive role that the institutions of traditional leadership can contribute to the unfolding liberation in our country. His dynamic involvement in popular youth work, underground activity, mass mobilization, so him pay decisive, so him play decisive role in the establishment of the progressive mass organization across the whole country. At the historic congress of the ANC Youth League in 1991, in Kwandebele, Comrade Tavoma Seve was elected to the National Executive Committee of the ANC Youth League. The NEC also elected, to, elected him to serve as a member of the Youth League National Working Committee, leading with Peter Mukaba, Rapum Lekan as Secretary General, Mpoli Khoro as Deputy Secretary General, the late Ignatius Jacobs as Treasurer General, and as additional members, Mnyama Zeli Boy, Andrew Dipila, Kaukelo Lehoro, Derek Masuku, Pax Mankasane, Mzwandile Mklanzi, Tawang Samson Makweta, Jerry Azwindindo, and Phoebe Potriter. The early 90s were one of the peak moments in the existence of the ANC Youth League. The multi-party negotiations were in full swing and was also the political and third force violence in KwaZulu Natal and Gauteng. This leadership of the ANC Youth League with Comrade Masebe as the integral part ensured that the youth, youth voice were present in the negotiations, pushing for the leadership to ensure that the people are not left defenseless in the face of violence by forming self-defense unit and that the tactic of mass mobilization remains relevant. Together with Pax Mankatane, Dirk Masuku, Comrade Tabo represented the Youth League in the ANC Negotiations Committee. He was also part of those who argued for the meeting between the ANC Youth League and the IFP Youth Brigade as, a ne as necessary to bring the end to violence and build lasting peace in KwaZulu Natal. It was during the period, it was during this period that Comrade Tabo started his journey as the foremost, as one of the foremost communicators in South Africa, along with Patsman Katlana, Edwin Mavizela, they formed the nucleus of the ANC Youth League uh, Department of Information of, and Publicity, DIP, promoting uh, the programs and positions of the ANC Youth League and the ANC and subsequently starting the ANC magazine, Youth League magazine, The Horizon. They also invested in training young communicators in the provinces of the ANC Youth League to ensure that when the Youth League communicates, it does so with clarity being un unapologetic without being populist. This contingent of young communicators 
played an important role in the ANC first elections campaign in 1994. The development of its message and engaging the media and public, pub, public on the import, oh, it played an important role in the development of the message of engaging the media and the public on the importance of these elections and the ANC slogan of better life for all. The ANC Youth League generation, generational transition of 1994. So, Comrade Pitamukava, Tabama Ignatius Jacobs, Vusima Vimbela, Dipuo Peters, Jauhelo Likoro, and others leave the ranks, leaving the ranks of the youth league, uh, the youth movement. Comrade Tabo was elected as the ANC Treasurer General with Lulu Johnson as the President and Mpolihoro as Secretary General. He continued to look to lead the ANC Youth League as a member of the National Waiting Committee until 1998. As Treasurer General, Comrade Tabo Masebe initiated investments by the ANC Youth League and advised comrades and colleagues on financial literacy. He taught many of us personal savings, investing in property, and other instruments. His seminal contribution was highlighted when he was part of a team assigned the responsibility to create and immortalize the June 1976 student uprising. Together with other, co with other comrades, they advocated and created the Hector Peterson Memorial in Soweto. The memory still stands at the park and is internationally recognized as a symbol of the struggles of young people and students in our country. It also serves as a recognizable political tourist attractions of our country and a source of education about the history of our struggle. As he exited the ANC Youth League, Comrade Tavo started his career as a government communicator and public servant. Public servant. At various points during the last 20 years, he served as spokesperson for the Houten Premier, the then Houten Premier, uh, Bazima Shilowa, Deputy President and uh, former President Halima Mutlante, Premier David Makura, he was also the head of the International and Media Liaison Unit of Government, Communication and Information System, GCIS. Comrade Tavo's ability to communicate positions of government and that of the ANC was based on his deep knowledge of society we live in and the struggle of the people of South Africa. He was thus able to communicate on a range of diverse issues. This includes responding the, to the Truth and Reconciliation Commission, the TRC report in 1998, the situation in Zimbabwe in 2008, and more recently, uh, in Gauteng Social Services with Life is Demaining, the PPE scandal, as well as the complex uh, issues such as the approach of the, to the Gauteng city region. Premier Makura fondly explained, and you, I quote, he would, Comrade Tavo would always proceed from the premise that if we want to build trust with the public, we must be honest and frank. When government uh, has gotten it wrong, we must always admit that we have gotten it wrong. In his responsibility as a communication and a media activist, he contributed, 
contributed enormously to the battle of ideas, always putting progressive ideas and, and articulating the principle of the liberation movement. He reached out to many journalists, opinion makers, and was central in forging uh, the what, uh, links with the progressive media and narrative initiators. He, he had time he had time for his counterparts in the media. Net, uh, spent time networking, assisting them in, in, in understanding the standpoint and the thinking of both the ANC and government on various issues. Comrade Tabo Masebe performed his duties with diligence, commitment, leading and supporting the teams that he was in charge of as a senior public servant and was always available and accessible. He was highly regarded as a reliable, sober, always patient, calm, and incorruptible. Perhaps I must repeat this. He was always regarded as reliable, sober, always patient, calm, and incorruptible. There was no task too big or too small to be performed by him. Following a request by President Mutlante, he joined the presidency at a challenging time after the recall of President Tawumbik. Articulating how government was performing its duties and managing transition became his focus. He was able to articulate the responsibilities and the work with ease because he understood the policies and programs of both government and the governing party. As a diligent public servant, he did his own research work on any task given to him. He led his team to, firm, to, to perform beyond expectation. He treated and engaged both his senior and junior colleagues with the same attitude and respect. This applied to ministers, premiers, MECs, at national and provincial level. With him, any statement and pronunciation of government work had to reflect a good understanding of the intent of government and the implication for the public. Thus, he meticulously scrutinized every statement, every paragraph, every sentence without compromise. Comrade Tabo was concerned and said about the state of the ANC. We are told we must not speak for the dead, but we know some of us who have always been with him. So Comrade Tabo was concerned and said about the state of the ANC, the organization that he grew up in and became his family until the last breath, his last breath on earth. He spoke openly about the state of the African National Congress and the divisions that are evident and its impact on transformation agenda of the country and service delivery to our people. Comrade Tabo was a loyal patriot and one of the finest cadres of the ANC. He was indeed a servant of the people. Comrade Tabo loved sports. He was an Eden Kaiser Chiefs fan, Manchester United, golf, and F1 support. He loved his wine and going to the gym and was passionate about golf. At the time of his passing, 
Comrade Tabo was a Deputy Director General responsible for the government communications and information system in Gauteng. He was also the Acting Director General in Gauteng government. He survived by his two sons, Chamano Masebe, Muisepi Masebe, his three sisters, Mulebuhe, Muerewa, Florence, his two brothers, Humulang, and Beki Masebe. Go well, Comrade Tabo. Go well, servant of the people. Chimbirani Zwabu Dimaimu. Your journey is a fulfilled one. You gave the people of South Africa the best you had. Kawa Derenga Muraro. Mukovaga. Gumani. Nga Ene. Nivuye. Panda Auche Namung. Kakame. Tindindia Mids and Baronga Sham. morning to everybody, the mourners, our children, and our grandchildren. I greet all the people observing protocol. I am speaking as a sister to Tabo, Maimu. I, I, I hear you calling Maimu the other way around. It's Maimu. Uh, he is my uncle's son. Papa Wamina na Papa Watabu are brothers, sharing the same father, but different mothers. Uh, we come from a big family. We come from a very big family right down at Merve. That's where our grandfathers and grandmothers were staying. That's where Papa Chamanu grew up with my father. So we are here as a family. We are mourning a great elephant. This elephant comes from Limpopo, right in the heart of Limpopo. Kahom, Bangkat, Kamasebe. 
there's a mountain just at the Limpopo River uh, called Homba. It is the mountain Yakamasebe. So we come here crying. We are in tears. Uh, the elders could not come. So they can't come. They are there at home now, crying, thinking of Chamano, Nachililo, Nangwana Wabo, Natabo Maimu. We missed Tabo for many years. We missed Tabo because Tabo was the child of the government. We used never to know where Tabo is. If I want to tell you the truth, Tabo was always on duty. So me take a little one away in a kali. I can say you go at the relevant one, but you live. Today we have come to bury the son. Papa wa ena airungwa na wasukweni maimu. Today we are in tears. We have lost a great man. We have come to accompany Tabo to his last journey. Pa ni ba te ni kupela Tabo. Mwana wa chililo na chamano. Kore utle la kase. Ufamba yuku rula. Eh, Johannesburg is too far for us. When we, we used to come here by train, we used to sleep in the train and wake up in Johannesburg in the morning. So you can imagine, it is very far for us. So, we are crying. We are thinking of your parents who are sleeping. You are joining them today. We want to thank the government. And even thank the core workers of Tahabu. For joining us together with the friends and relatives from far. We are so many. The Masebe family is a very big family. So we have come to say to our son, the big elephant. Although we missed you a lot in real life. Okay, one issue. Robala, Samo Kucha, Ushumile Ko, Kalebo. Olebarin. Chloe Robale Kahu Kakucho. We'll now move with speed and call upon Mr. Homulang Masebe, on behalf of siblings, to come and pay a tribute. And immediately after that, we'll have a tribute by children, Chamano and Mwitsepi Masebe. I'm told uh, there is a musical item that will be offered by the team that is controlling everything here. Please, please feel free to do so in between. Thanks, Thanks I'm told I skipped the chief who has still has to speak, Musanda Chelapal. Apologies. Please come forward, chief. Apologies.
program director, uh, I would like to thank you for giving me this opportunity to speak on behalf of the Famashao family. Now, if we were at home, you were going to pay a lot today because of the chief. Yes, that is why I started uh, addressing him. But my apologies again. I'm going to speak in Chivenda so that even a, a former president, a Mr. Mutlante, and the premier, Mr. David Makura, if you are going to miss what I'm going to say, you will miss a lot about the life of Tabo because I grew up with him. You heard the aunt when she was speaking, she said, these people, they lived uh, for a couple of years at Mashau. At Mashau, that is the place where his mother is coming from. Now, this Mashau is a royal family. So I grew up with Tabo. Now, let me start talking about the, the family uh, of Mashau. Tabo Basebe Ndimuduru wawo baranganani na wawo nyamadara muteiwana mashau. Wawo baranganani wawo zani na magireji. Hawa wawo baranganani ndi muraya chikuru. E, chira ya wakuru. That is how my grandfather used to praise himself. When he says chira ya wakuru, in other words, he was an advisor to the elderly. He was, I think he was still young by then. Now, Abam Keguru Ababo Nyama Daranabo Baranganan, Nibone Borusa Ho, Wochidiro. Ababo Chidiro, never Bobo Elisveno Bamia Tabo Masebe. Zuno Ababa to Bavidi, Nandiji says, Nibone Waita or ANC, E. Kanesibuya, Kabo. Ababa Keguru Bavidi. E mukara na muke guru baba chikoda ngamanda. Baba na bukoni abo. Baba bamukara. Baba chikona udiba za shango la abo. Na baba sa itizwa zoba mutrenia bako uruwa na mawuru. Mara baba chidiba shango la abo ngamanda. Zino tabo osu kopanga ningezo. Rishango li ya reli wangori. Makuru wawe baba chidiba shango. Eh, Muzi tawa katuwa mutuku na nevaba chiturero ribiza. Vari dhani ya fava duru. Heva duru. Nani ya lidiva anorilo guma gaisha angola weiwe. He was referring to the eh, Mashau country. When he called us every day. And then we will not tell him about the boundaries of this Mashau village. Then he will tell us every day. When we passed on, these people are going to take this land from you because you don't know it. For your information, uh, Mr. Mutlante and David Makura, at the place where we are staying, we are still suffering because of that. There is a piece of land and there is also a fountain where we perform our rituals. But because of these people who were said in this obituary they, that they are some of the officials who are corrupt. We are unable to get to that place where we perform our rituals. So I'm also pleading with you, government officials, if you can help us to come to Lipompo so that we can get that piece of land, which is very, very important to us. I can even share a tear when I'm talking about this thing, uh, that place is called Chabafamadi. Chabafamadi, that is the place where, when our people died, there are some of the people who are sent there. But because of these people who are corrupt, we are unable to go there. And my cousin Tabo, because he was not the person who will boast about himself and talk about things for himself. He never took trouble to go to Lipompo and tell them that what they are doing to us is not good. Even today he is gone. That is why I'm building to you, to, even to other government officials. If you are 
here please help us that is my plea zino kabare ndiye mbenga hata bo masebe musi eh ange ini chiozi ange ini chiozi bona koromo njinga manda ezi koromo tabo zilisa odzilisa koromo ahama no ahama adoba arena zinoni ralana zitungulu ralana michero yote ine ya wanarange ini dagani na hoyu tabo masebe Zoba sichita kaza ngamanda musiboda bote bazwara banga ndi humbura mwa mwa une nana asiti zwi hangwi boda bote babo bikora mwa muro ti divuru nga chisutu kana nga chisutu ba udivano no fidelele in zimbabwe they call it gusha oyo muro wo bikwa mwerero ani abantina ari na kishitelele rabaro takara ngamanda na zvinori ka dzo humbura zwa sichita kaza musibazwara banga vachidange ni amashawo Rechi chira zao budinga mani. Zino tawo. Oda atuwa. Vayange ini sividiero. Vajusika sividiero. Arimusi ya chibotomo ya univen. Ada abuya habe yange ini amashawo. Achida. Achidu zura zi weekende zi mwachumere chikoroni. Achidu zi anara utada. Zino. Nenda ni satuwa active guys wa politiki. Ndi hafa. Lingwa duwa nendi chibuya chikoroni. Ndi pochi firi. Muzwara wano oba kukidi mazunga. Nga makuru wa wabu wanya madara. Ndiri murandu. Variati divi ufuna mapolisa. Wako mutoda mudhuru. Kuripa ngele mapolisa. Roneta nga mapolisa. Wafano. Wabocha sezino. Muzwara wano rito dera wabu. Taribone kaba sudisha. Bada wanga faribone. Bada farata wete. Hello duwa wana wujeri ndo. Ndi hafa inenda tomo duwa wujeri. Aba watu ufiruboru kitu makata vwana mela valdezi ya bachiko shaba mapolisa. Tabu wana mbo tu. Aba ninge univen. Zino wapura dobara dara darapa mugadi. Ama rumuwa upo Peter the late. E chilapara. May his soul rest in peace. Musi. A ninge itabu. Otuwa aya Belgium. Kana ninge youth league I'm not sure. Zino tabu wambo diva. Kanyus paper. Aji vaka newspaper. Haba makuru wa oba mke guru bachi. Wona chinepe chila chereka newspaper. Vaba bachi opanga manda mapolisa. Vari mzwara wanona zuno. Odova uya ribura isa mapolisa. Tabu wabu ya na chikipa zuno. Chongu walu ozo zila. Zwa musiba hangeni. Ova picture yawe. Na machude ni mawe. Haba la mke guru bato. Jia chikipa chila ni tabu wasi. Oba chi goda bege ni bachi wana. Vajia chikipa chila ni. Vajia. Tumura chisi ya meru. Wajia wa zumba ngangumu. Wari mzwara wano chikipanga chuwane. Chito ripangera mapolisa. Mara ezo wa zongo ito uritavo. Adiche mafungwa apolotiki. Oa isa panda usikera. Musi ya chiverera. Aitauri. Shango libe ngandira yoni. Tavo ndi mungo wa watu be. Awa ita uri nendi diwe wu. Pita mkava. Ngathe. Zewe zi early 80s. Musi ndi chidao darafa makuwane. Ndawa nchito mufone. Nda chupinga chote ya rini gai. Nda amba. Adanjia. Rochimbira hote na avu. Nanduni hangi avu jeri. Hangi echea wano ndia udiva. Nga muzwara woyu. Zino. Rinesa muta. Wa hangi ini ya mashawo. Rifaroba isara nga manda nga utuwa muzwara washu. Ngoro roba rachikadi mufuna. Ende hoyu muzwara. Una zinjizo ya bachikadi do ritera. Batu wa shango la... South Africa nga wanga reza. Zee zuro zura. Ria nge inichi ya wero. Nga zi ten za April. Anandi za kaki 1993. Wazi do zuro iti ya minimus. Nga zi ten za April. Ro zura. Kako nani yanga mwe. Ndi na tawo. Riko pare diyo. Nuchubo firi. Bo krisa ni wotu nchua boro hova. Tavondi ya faya sumbezo ufuna ANC ya wena batu ayo. Nendo zulana ya hapo tavo ombo zito namba ajia kiza we ari muzwara ndi doni bona. Zore oya gai chongo zito. O namba utu wangantani uri. Oba kwenye kwe obona uri. Vango makumre idiva gai bo tirele zeana. Zino suneti ngatu wamba ni zori ba ANC. Abongo kandiri rineba amashia unaba amasebe. Rongo rate wari rote. Na shango lote la South Africa, lora teru. Bako zui fazori tabu hii, owa mutuene, 
asinyagere ene mune zitu. Oba chinyagera batu. Oyumutu, vase za mingwa ya wei. Ndikaro to maza politiki. Mara unabatu beba dangamurau, toba wana baku pupa pupa, wachinyago wana rakazi TV. Uribaye pandawa yo itazwezi neba itazone zisi zwabu udi. Mara kata wazongo raron. So, as a family, what I can tell you, the ANC people, we are proud of Tabo Maseme. We are very proud of him because he never appeared in the media for the wrong reasons. Riparishi takaranga madangori, hongo buya arishoni isa, richi yanga ngeka politiki, hea wa ajichira hone. Zino riri, nga uraro, muya wanga wa derenga muraro, rikoribu. Realable chief, and apologies once more. If you're an owner of black Volvo with registration number JF95YZGP, JF95YZGP, you are requested to go at the back there. Someone has forgotten something important in your car, and they want to access that. As Ayla indicated, we'll move with speed now to the next phase. We'll take a tribute by sibling, Mr. Humalang Masebe, and then we'll be followed by a tribute by children immediately after that. As they always say, and all protocols observed, let me thank you for this opportunity. One can never be ready for giving a speech at a time like this. I was praying the whole week that I will be able to do it. I want to talk about my brother, but I don't know where to start. So I will just remember the things that made me happy. Our interactions. My wife was telling me after we had the sad news, or no man, tonight or this weekend. Because we would be watching a Formula One race. He would phone me at 10 in the evening and we would be discussing that race while the race is going on. We were both Ferrari fans. And the same would happen when Man United was playing and they were winning or they were embarrassing us as they are doing these days. But he would always call and we would discuss that. The same goes for that other one that just fired their coach. <laughs> but uh, when we talked about his work and politics, Sometimes you just say, then you know he does not like what is happening. A minister would be speaking on TV, he would send me a message, sometimes he would call her, what is this guy saying? Because he always wanted things to go the way they were supposed to. Uh, my sister Poppy was talking the other day, or he did not like the term, yeah, my people. I mean, our people. He even wrote it on Facebook the other day. Why do government, uh, why do politicians? He said politicians like saying our people. When you say our people, it means there is a group that is not our people. Uh, one thing you should know, go to so <clears throat> yeah that was my brother i know we do not have the whole day to talk about him but uh, 
Abu Tabo. We are said you are leaving us. We will take care of the boys. Sign people, what are you doing? We will take care of the boys. And we will hold your legacy. We will maintain your legacy. It is said, Marautla Lok. If there is an afterlife, you will be with your parents wherever you're going. Uh, I know they are going to welcome you with open hands. Chimiran Zawudi, Magoba Magoba God. But Gumanga Ninu, Pananga Chenamu, Nda. Um, greetings to everyone. My name is Chamano Masebe. I'm the oldest son of Tabo Masebe. And I'm here with my younger brother, Muitepi Masebe. When I look at myself today, I can see that I'm almost the same height as my dad, if really not taller than him. There were a lot of things that we had in common, my dad and I. And that was the love for sports, gym, and probably the fact that my voice was much deeper than his most times. <laughs> Just like my dad, I'm very shy. And I know that his communication skills were on par. And as I stand here today, I hope I won't fumble. There's a lot of life experiences and good memories I shared with my dad. The one outstanding moment was the wisdom he imparted. My dad was a very principled man. He taught me that integrity, respect, and love are very important virtues. And when it came to my dad's work, he was always open to discuss with me and Tepi about what goes He was always willing to discuss his um, work and what he does and who he is talking to about politics and um, issues surrounding this country or the world in general. And we would learn a lot from him. A few things that I also admired about my father were his dedication, he was also disciplined, calm, and very level-headed with everything that he did, especially with his work. He never switched up when it came to an interview, whenever he was asked very challenging questions or questions that would be very hard to answer according to majority of us here. He stayed true to what he would say. He stayed true to his facts. He never twisted his words and he would always keep things real. Uh, uh, his love for me old school music was also, oh. sorry. Um. His love for old school music was also the love language we shared. 
He taught my brother and I songs like Loving Arms by Dobby Gray, Let's Get Together and Feel Alright by Bob Molly, and the likes of Lionel Richie, and he also loved Luther Vandross. Um, while we were driving to golf or the gym, unlike my brother, I would sing with my dad. <clears throat> Dad, we just want to say thank you for being a great father, for giving us the love and support and all the great things you did for us. You send us to the best school, and as we stand here, we know that you are not forever gone, because everything that you were, your legacy still lives in me and Chami. We will be the great human beings that we are supposed to be because you taught us well. We will, we will forever honor you as your sons and make you proud. We love you, Dad. Thank you. Beautiful. Thank you so much, boys. Thank you, thank you. Uh, that was Chamano and we tape him. Thank you so much. Remain strong, boys. We'll move and call upon Me Florence Masebe to also pay tribute to Comrade Tabo Masebe. How's Florence? Ndi Macheroni, wo Premier Makura, na wo former President Motland, the Minister and the MEC, the Ronevan, na bangu baranga panda bote. Muta wa hamasebe, na wa hamashao. On any ordinary day, I'm a really good speaker, even if I say so myself. I am an artist, so it shouldn't be tough for me to find words. I had the misfortune uh, and it's crazy that it's not the misfortune of being the one who had to call a lot of you and my siblings one by one on Monday late afternoon to tell them the sad news of the passing of the best brother God could ever craft. You see, if there was such a thing as brother Olympics, my Muma Seve would have gotten gold medals each time. This man brothered right. The most protective human being I ever had. The most supportive superhero I ever knew. From when I was just a little girl. And he didn't only do that for me. Each of my siblings would tell you, he loved right and he loved hard. I've had quite a number of challenges at some point in my life. And each time I knew, whatever it is, if I called my brother, I would be fine. I was shot by unknown people who till this day have never been found in 1999. And as I was lying in a pool of blood in my own driveway, I remember saying, whatever you do after you call the ambulance, call Tabo. And he showed up and he made me believe that I can get better 
and that whether they find those people or not, the important thing is for me to live. On many other occasions, Tabo would show up for me. I was in an, in an interview recently, I think it was with uh, Clement Magnatella on Radio 702. And I was being profiled and, you know, we're talking about my work on the Republic. And they're taking calls. Guess who calls the radio station? Tabo Masseh. Because his sister is on the radio. Everything I did excited him to the last minute. And he called through and started telling anecdotes about how he would be at events, big events. And the late President Mandela would come through and say, Tabo, Tabo, come over here. And that was his favorite story about me. And he'd say, yeah, so I would feel so proud that Mandela is calling me. And then when I get there, he says, how are you? Where's Florence? How is she doing? <laughs> he didn't mind, though. He was my brother. He was my hero. He was my best friend. He's the kind of guy that would have killed the bull for me. On an occasion, or maybe two, he has dumped boyfriends for me when he did not deem them proper to be in my life. And there was no discussion afterwards. He dumped them. We were done. This man loved us. This man loved his children. Every other week, we would have the cookouts and we would sit and just get together for no reason. Nothing parties, we called them. In the last few days, last few weeks, he had been looking for a nothing party. I need to quickly take you through what we went through in December. Tabo fell ill while he was at home and called an ambulance and went to a hospital. But he only managed to send Muitepi a message saying, I'm not well and I'm in hospital, I'm admitted. He couldn't send further messages after that because he later told us that the porter took away his phone. So we didn't know where to find Tabo. We had to go through quite some strides to find out which hospital he was being treated at. And when we got there, Things were not good. We prayed and prayed. We prayed so much for an entire week running up to Christmas. We literally just asked for a Christmas miracle. And I think he felt sorry for us and gave us the Christmas miracle. The rest of the months since December 2022 were a bonus. They were an extra time. Tabo decided to come back because that time he could see we were not too prepared. He had hoped that this time we would be prepared. My Mui, we can never be prepared. But here we are. And as my brother said, we will continue to love and support your boys because that is what you would have expected us to do. The one is Rabu de Makova God. The one is Rabu de Muduru of a Fama, the Vatanga Rudo, Shengonga, Nanja, Namanos, and Namanato, or a chet. The one is Rabu de Muduru of Baranganani. The one
thank you so much, uh, Comrade uh, Florence. It's a difficult moment indeed to appreciate that. I'm told I must call upon the family choir, Auspobi. I'm told you are leading us uh, with that item. Uh, we'll take the family choir and immediately after that, I'll request Comrade Kumbozo Nchabeni to be ready. We'll take a tribute from Comrade Dibuo Peters and you will render that item, Comrade Kumbozo. Thank you so much. Uh, let's take the family choir.
to the former president of the Republic of South Africa, President Mutlanti, the premier of the province of Gauteng, Premier Makura, my colleague, Minister Moni Kubaini, Minister in the Presidency, the NEC's mayors who are present and fellow mothers. I'm going to read a tribute on behalf of Comrade Dibuo Peters which is a message from one of those who are part of the generation of young lions that received a clarion call from President General O.R. Tambo to make South Africa ungovernable. And they responded, or we responded with a generational mission that says it's freedom in our lifetime. The message reads as follows, and I'll read from the first person. I would like to take this opportunity to convey our heartfelt condolences to the bereaved family of our late unsung hero and Kader, Comrade Tabo Masebe. Comrade Tabo will be remembered as one of the most outstanding comrades and selfless cadres of our movement, who at a very young age dedicated his life to the struggle to emancipate our people and our country from the yoke of colonial domination and apartheid subjugation. He was one of our comrades who had a combination of good qualities rarely found in one person. These rare qualities did not go unnoticed amongst his peers. That is why it is not a surprise that youth of our country bestowed confidence in him by trusting him with the responsibility of leading our youth structures at a time when it was not fashionable to take up leadership responsibilities because of the risks associated with such positions. He rose organically in the ranks of the youth movement on the basis of his unwavering commitment to the struggle for the total emancipation of our people, risking both limb and life. At each stage of his involvement, the confidence was bestowed on him. He did not invoke himself or exaggerate feeling of self-importance and arrogance. He respected the revolutionary tasks that confronted our country and did not regard himself as possessing monopoly of wisdom or having all the answers to the challenges that confront our country, our people, and our movement. He was respectful, humble, and served with great humility. He crossed paths with those who sought to entrench racial and class domination as a permanent feature that defines the daily reality of our people. His commitment to fundamentally alter the lives of our people, the working class and the poor, made him become an activist and freedom fighter at a very young age. His good deeds and compassion towards his people are some of the basic ingredients that must define the rebirth and renewal of our movement, the ANC. The new renewal of our movement is a necessary and overarching task that must be undertaken if our movement is to regain the confidence of the masses of our people, especially the working class and the poor. In undertaking this important revolutionary task, we must build a movement that is member-based but cater-led. May his soul rest in peace. The spear has fallen. Edrani Swaboti, Mayemu Muduru Abafamati. Ah. Indeed, the spear has fallen. We'll move to the next phase of our program. We'll take a video now, and immediately after that, will request the young lion generation led by Comrade Malusi Kikaba to come and drap the coffin with the colors of the African National Congress 
and also represent that team by coming here to pay tribute. Let's take a video. My name is Temba Kiro Kinana. Uh, Tabo to me was a brother. Tabo was everything to me. Uh, Tabo myself, uh, received me in Johannesburg. Tabo taught me how to drive a car. Tabo, we stayed together most of the time. A week before Tabo departed, we would speak every day. Tabo was uh, a young lion. Tabo was uh, a struggle hero. More than a brother to all of us. We've lost a man. We've lost the son of the soil. We've lost a cadre, a true cadre of the ANC, who didn't go for, for anything than service, service to the people of South Africa. We'll miss you, Tabo. Until we meet again, my, my, my brother. My name is Joe Matebula. Tabo was a brother, a comrade, a friend, a very dependable ally. We spent most of our time together traversing the whole of the then Northern Transvaal within the villages, the townships. We built structures. Uh, and after the unveiling of the African National Congress, we used to build the Women's League, the civic movement. Makubela from Limpopo. We were brought up uh, under the leadership of Comrade Tawoma Seva back then in the Northern Province. And uh, I believe that Comrade Tawo is one of the finest uh, products ever produced by the revolutionary movement uh, of our time. And uh, we, all we need now is to give him the dignified and decent send off that he deserves. We believe that uh, we shall have done him an honor for the contribution that he did give to this particular country and uh, society at large. He's the son of the soil. We will carry on the struggle from where he has left. I'm Kumbuzo Nchabeni. I was raised by Tabo Masebe and he raised me from the age of nine until a grown up that I am. He has always been caring. I was recalling an incident when we went to the Kwandebele conference and I left my medication at home. He had to drive back to Kwandebele before he opened the conference to go and get me medication because I didn't want any other doctor. He has always cared for me. In the last few months from November last year, he has been very particular. He text me or talk to me at least once or twice a week and to, make, to encourage me and to say I've raised a fighter, I've raised a strong woman. So for me it's the support and him always being there. The last text to me was last week which he said great stuff, keep the momentum and don't let off because the country needs you and that's what we're going to do. So that's the memory of, of him uh, from me and we keep in his spirit of service we'll continue to serve our people. My name is Tretani Dorothy Masango. I'm the, I used We are now under extreme time pressure. We'll move with speed and take the team or the leadership that represented that generation of young people that declared freedom or death, victory is certain. I'll request Comrade Malusi Kikaba and the team to please come forward and execute the task that has been assigned to you. Let's move with speed, comrades. We are under extreme time pressure. Thanks, thanks. Let's have that revolutionary song, comrade.
That's it. We can do better, comrades. Thank you so much. That's better. Thank you so much, comrades. We will take Comrade Malusi Kitaba, the former president of the African National Congress Youth League. And immediately after that, we're going to take Comrade Phoebe Bonfitte, who will also represent the young lion generation. In that order, comrades, please. The former president, Comrade Khalima Mutlante, the premier of Gauteng, Comrade David Makura, and members of the family. Ministers, MECs, and the leadership of the Young Lions who shook the citadels of power in Pretoria and made the racists tremble in fear. Fate, as it were, has imposed upon our grief-stricken souls the responsibility to memorialize a beloved comrade and friend. Our words are not enough adequately to convey our heartfelt tribute to this gentle giant of our generation. As we undertake this noble responsibility, we cannot but be humbled by the fact that at one stage we came to know, be friends, and share the same trenches of the struggle with someone so remarkable. Today we assemble to perform a painful duty 
given that Comrade Tabo was such a towering figure among us, whose life was an inspiration to many of us. At all levels, his leadership quality was visible for all to see. We met Tabo as young revolutionary activists, and during the course of time, we, forced, we forged enduring friendships and bonds of affection. What drew us to him was not merely his friendliness, but above all else, his intellectual prowess and total devotion to the struggle. Comrade Tabo was an intellectual and moral giant of our generation who stood firm by his convictions until his final days. He epitomized in himself gallantry in the face of vicious enemy onslaught, the sheer exuberance of youth, and the vision of our people for victory over white supremacy and colonial bondage. He epitomized the triumph of principle over convenience and collective action over individual pursuits. He reminded us through the force of his example that it was neither for glory nor distinction that we joined the struggle as young activists, committing all our energies and efforts to the fight to emancipate our people from the indignity of oppression and exploitation. It was only because of our yearning for freedom. Born during a very dark time during our country's history, he voluntarily joined the people's struggle to free themselves from bondage. He was prepared to suffer together with and for his people, making all the sacrifices required to ensure that freedom was achieved. He paid no regard to his personal comfort or whether the struggle could demand of him to make the ultimate sacrifice. He was a humble giant whose humility was not a a symbol of cowardice on his part. He was humble among his people, but fearless in confronting racial arrogance. His humility was used to mobilize the masses and inspire them to commit heroic deeds in the struggle. He dedicated all his youth to the organization, mobilization and education of the youth, believing in the need for them to always be willing to occupy the front trenches of the struggle. He understood the truth that no revolution can be victorious without this effective education, mobilization, and education of young people into political action. For ultimately, the youth are the catalysts of the future. Together, we dreamed of a society where our people would enjoy ownership of the land of their country and its produce, control the means of production and the fruit of those means able to determine their own destiny. We believed that we had to destroy the political infrastructure as well as the social and economic relations of the system of white supremacy and remove from our social fabric the entire vestiges of white domination. These are the ideals Comrade Tabo leaves unaccomplished. He leaves behind a people who have achieved enormous social progress but are still very far from completing the mission to transform themselves into being finally the owners of the productive assets of their own land. He leaves behind a people recovering from the ravages of a devastating pandemic and other natural disasters in KwaZulu-Natal, Eastern and Western Capes. He leaves behind a people still reeling from high unemployment and an economy that is not growing well enough which, is, which still remains exclusive, skewed overwhelmingly in favor of a racial minority. He also leaves behind a movement grappling with the challenges of its renewal in the face of complex existential realities of close to three decades of freedom, determined that it should accomplish all these challenges without imploding. It is vital that this agenda of renewal and unity must be set by and bear the imprint of the social motive forces of the National Democratic Revolution. It must be for the sole purpose of advancing the historic mission of these motive forces of total emancipation 
along the path of the most maximum unity. In his name, we will continue to work hard for the genuine unity and cohesion of the ANC, which is the cornerstone for the unity and cohesion of the motive forces of the NTR and ultimately our country. We are indebted to him for all that he has done for us. We count him boldly and proudly among the chief architects of our freedom. We wish his family comfort during this difficult time and trust that time shall heal their wounds. We shall miss him dearly. Thank you. Amandla, Program Director, uh, the Masebe family, former President Halima Motlante, Premier Makura, and officials and members of government, government uh, Premier of Limpopo, Comrade Stan Matabate, uh, ministers, leaders of the Youth League from different generations, representative of um, other political parties, um, current and former youth leaguers, fellow mourners and colleagues, all protocols observed. We are gathered here this morning to lay to rest and celebrate the life of one of the finest amongst us. And it's a particular privilege to do so with his families, colleagues, comrades and friends. We thank the Masebe family for giving us their son and father and know that your loss is our loss and your pain is our pain. Over the last few days, tributes and remembrances, many attributes that characterize Taubo Masebe have been highlighted. His humility, his adherence to principle, his work ethic, his being approachable, attention to detail, well read, the list goes on. What emerges is a picture of the Tabo we know, well-rounded, respected, and loved. Since I will be speaking on behalf of the generational cohort which Tabo was part of, let us explain why Masebe represents the best of that generation. It was a generation which earned the accolade of young lions of the struggle from no less a giant than Oliver Reginald Tambo, when they made reality the call to render apartheid unworkable and made it their generational mission. A young Masebe from the dusty streets of the northern province became conscientized to hate the oppression and exploitation that was at the foundations of the system of apartheid. Like many others from his generation, he came to realize that the abhorrence of the system is not enough. That to end it, he had to become part of a movement that mobilized and organized to be that change. Thus, he became an activist in the youth, student, and civic movements, working to mobilize traditional leaders, teachers, civics, women, workers, and a host of other sectors. When the repression sought to remove the leaders of the youth and student movement during the formative years of the South African Youth Congress, Psycho, Tabo and others, as we heard from Comrade Jerin Dow later this week or earlier this week, were ready to step in and pick up the spear. This generation of young lions in the crucible of struggle learned a number of lessons. We knew as a generation that we stood on the shoulders of those who went before us and that we were part of a long and illustrious tradition of struggle. 
We were taught to know and explore our history, to understand and learn from the past, its ebbs and flows, better to inform our paths towards the future. Masebe, Sebe, as we said before, was well raised, always willing to learn and engage with an insatiable curiosity and a wide range of interest. Yet another lesson, lesson was understanding of contemporary issues, the world we live in, emerging and new trends, and most importantly, the real life challenges and experiences of the people, the youth and students, workers and women. Tabo throughout his life lived this lesson. It was a lesson which Peter Mokaba, who those days were responsible for pro political education, drummed into all of us, asking the question repeatedly, what is the role of the youth? And we responded, the youth must learn. This commitment to continuous learning stood Tabo in good stead throughout his life, which made him always to strive for excellence in whatever endeavor he undertook. At various points to understand and contribute to the strategic approach to negotiations, as he represented the views of the Youth League in the ANC's negotiating team, as well as in the Constitutional Committee. Masebe also sharpened his knowledge of matters of youth development in the forums of the National Youth Development Forum, the NECC, focusing and highlights the challenges of youth unemployment and education that were already so prevalent in the 80s and the early 90s. He was in the forefront of arguing that ours was not a lost generation, that we chose the struggle and therefore contributing to the first generation of national youth policy in South Africa which saw the emergence of the National Youth Commission and eventually the Umsobombo Youth Fund. As Treasurer General of the ANC Youth League, he made it his job to not only understand about raising and managing resources for the immediate programs of the Youth League, but also the need to invest in the future sustainability of the League. Treasurers of the Youth League like Bachana Mokwena, Ignatius Jacobs, Fawcett Motibe, Tabo Masebe, Pemi Majodine, and Nikiwe Num understand that organizational resources were there to invest in the development of young men and women that they led. Indeed, when we called ourselves a preparatory school of activists of the ANC, it was no empty slogan. It meant investing in political education programs to sharpen our political and ideological skills, in the training of communicators on understanding the media, how to write and produce media, and the importance of agitation and the battle of ideas. It meant mobilizing resources for our gender committees to meet so that we learn about women's struggle at home and in other countries, training generations of young women um, led by the poor Peters, the likes of Comrade Pemi Majudina and many others, Comrade Faith Mazibuko, Comrade Kombucho Nchaveni and others. It taught us to, to, to it, it trained generations of young women to take their rightful place in the youth and women's movement and knew the importance of fighting for a non-sexist society as we determined our vision of the South Africa we want. And then, of course, to invest in the administration skills of our organization, to teach our branch secretaries, our regional secretaries, how to write reports, organizational analysis and strategies, implementation, as well as political management. There is a very rich archival treasure cove of such materials, papers, and media of the ANC Youth League from this era that still need to be studied to write the true history of our time. The investment in political education and training was further characterized by the fine balance between theory and practice, between militancy and discipline. 
Thus, our communicators such as Eddie Mabitsela, Pax Mankashlana, Annette Grisel, Ned Kekana, Tabo Masebe, Nomfanelo Kota, did not only learn about communications in theory, but put it in practice when they founded Horizon and wrote and produced the various media products that explained our programs and positions. This fine balance of theory and practice also saw Masebe and others when given the task, as we heard earlier, to immortalize the contribution of the 76th generation, made sure that they left the lasting legacy of the Hector Peterson Memorial that we have in Soweto today. Indeed, for the generation of Masebe, no job was too small or too big, too humble or seemingly insignificant to give it their all. Serving for them on the National Working Committee of the ANC Youth League over so many years was exactly that, a committee of work and of implementation. The ANC Youth League's of Tabo's generation's presence was felt in every single committee of the ANC and the mass democratic movement. It allowed our generation to learn from the immense skill and knowledge in our movement and to sharpen our own act advocacy on behalf of young people in this forum. In the process, we learned the value of shunning short-term popular solutions to complex problems and the importance of identifying and seizing important moments to achieve move progress and move our struggle towards a higher level. It was a generation that were not scared to break new ground, to venture into uncharted territories, because of the culture of rigorous debate in the Youth League. We all thought that the late Comrade Derek Masuk was a bit crazy when he proposed to convene, and this was early 1991-92, a conference of the then dreaded South African police in Soweto before 1994. But out of this initiative emerged the concept of community policing, still a cornerstone of our approach to safety and security today. Or even earlier when Masebe and others argued that it's time for us to sit down with the IFP Youth Brigade in order to ensure ending the violence and lasting peace in KZN and Gauteng. This generation of young lions were not only patriots who fought for their country. At various points they, including Masebe, were sent to represent South African youth at international events. They did so with distinction by immersing themselves in the process of understanding the situation of other struggling people, the balance of global forces, our position on non-alignment, unity of the South, pan-Africanism, building lasting comradeship and friendship. These characteristics of the generation of young lions are encapsulated in the motto of the Youth League of fight, produce and learn. To fight against apartheid and now against the evils of inequality, poverty and greed. To produce new generations of activists and agents for change. To produce intellectuals, administrators, scientists, innovators, entrepreneurs, public servants and representatives. And of course to learn by doing, to learn from others, to learn through self-improvement, through listening, reading and through engagement. Program Director Fellow Mourners, with the advent of democracy in 1994, this well-rounded knowledge and experience gained by this generation found expression in their contributions in many different spheres. They understood that the terrain of struggle had fundamentally changed and that the work of building a national democratic society that is democratic, non-racial, non-sexist and prosperous had just begun. Thus, we saw this generation of student and youth activists taking on responsibilities in many, many different spheres of our society, as professionals in the public service, in hospitals, schools, home affairs offices, agencies, as communicators and ambassadors, as public representatives and entrepreneurs, as cultural activists in the security establishment, in the media, in policy think tanks, in the trade union movement, in the sports movement, and in the ANC and its leagues. Tabo Masebe was amongst those serving as spokesperson and senior public servant 
in provincial and national government levels. They understood their roles as agents of change to implement and advocate for policies in whatever sphere they found themselves that were people-centered, people-driven, gender-sensitive, and for the advancement of a better life for all. Over the last two de decades, many of them experienced and bemoaned the impact that the sins of incumbency and factionalism had on our movement and were often marginalized because they refused to become part of slate politics that have become so endemic. At this point, we agree all with Stabo that the progressive and transformation project in South Africa is in serious trouble. That the advances in the deracialization and expanding of public service, of building and maintaining social and economic infrastructure, providing access to basic services to millions, towards women's emancipation in a non-sexist society, towards greater social cohesion, non-racialism, and a, common, a sense of common destiny are under serious threat. Key to this is the state of health of our movement for the, who for the last 110 years have been an integral part of the body politic and fabric of South Africa, the African continent, and of progressive humanity. These are matters that Masebe felt passionate about and would engage with all of us about what needs to be done. Taubo was the first to, to agree that there are no easy answers, no quick fi fixes or silver bullets. He agreed that we needed to honestly assess the 20 years of freedom, what we did right and the mistakes that were committed. He firmly believed that the ideal of a national democratic society, a South Africa that truly belongs to all its people, is a beacon of hope, was not only worth dreaming about, but was worth sacrificing for. Thus, till the very end, he worked and sacrificed for this ideal diligently, meticulously, and consistent. Tabo knew from his experience as a youth and student activist that being an agent for change mattered, but even more important to be part of a movement for change is what mattered and that what needs to be uh, uh, built. And as we today lay to rest our dear brother, father, uncle, colleague, and comrade, his death should echo as a clarion call. We often talk about a generational mission as if this is a once in a lifetime occurrence that you have when you're young. And indeed, each generation of young people must define its mission to either achieve or betray. But Tabo believed, and he was an example, that there is a need for an intergenerational mission to regenerate the ANC, to regenerate its ideology, its revolutionary morality, as well as its state of organization. And when we talk about regenerate, we talk about the regeneration in the language of Pixley Kasemes, famous speak of 1906, a regeneration that contributes ideas for the future and translates it into program and movement, as he called for the South African National Native Conference, and a regeneration which the generations of Lembebde, Susulu, and Tambo the 1976 generation and indeed the Young Lions generation have been able to call forward. This intergenerational mission to regenerate today is so much needed to ensure that South Africa's project of social transformation envisaged in the Freedom Charter and our democratic constitution is wrenched back to track. As we therefore honor the memory of Tabo Masebe and the many others who went before him, let us pick up his spear and let the example he set be multiplied. Hamba Kashle Komre Tabo Masebe, icon of the young lions, Amandla. Just hold it there. You, you, you'll play it immediately after I've called upon a representative of the African National Congress.
the former president of the Republic of South Africa and former deputy president of the African National Congress, Comrade Khalema Mutlante, to come and pay tribute to Comrade Tabo. Manda. The Masebe family, uh, Premier of Gauteng, Comrade David Makura, Program Director, Panyaza Lisufi, Ministers here present, MECs, Councillors, and other leadership of the Alliance. Our spiritual leaders, Reverend uh, Frank Chikani, our traditional leaders, Hosi Mashau, fellow mourners. It was with great sadness and shock that my wife, Gugu, and I learned about the sudden passing of comrade Tabo Masebe, with whom we both have had the privilege of working with so closely over the years in various capacities. To his family, we would like to express immense gratitude for sharing comrade Tabo Masebe with us in his extended family, the African National Congress. Even though we may not fully grasp the gravity of your deep sorrow and loss, we hope that you find solace and comfort in the knowledge that we are here to condole with you. Your loss is our loss. All the tributes since his passing have been a positive reflection underpinned by profound affection for the memory of Comrade Tabo. I've been asked to add our voice in paying tribute to this distinguished cadre of our organization. As Oliver Wendell Holmes Jr. said, and I quote, when we were young, our hearts were filled with fire. And as life is action and passion, a man must share in the actions and passions of his time at the risk of being judged not to have lived at all, close quote. Like many of his comrades and all, like all of us, Comrade Tabo is at once a product and a creator of history. Comrade Tabo, though self-effacing, his heart was filled with fire and shared in the actions and passions of his time. He distinguished himself in the role that he played First, as a student and a youth activist in the turbulent 1980s and early 1990s. Comrade Tabo and his generation of youth activists were privileged to have waged relentless struggles against apartheid. In the history of the ANC, we draw lessons from the 1930s when the ANC was moribund 
and went through a process of renewal from 1937, which led to the establishment of the ANC Youth League and the ANC Women's League in the 1940s. So the first generation of ANC Youth League leaders were critical of the mother body. However, resolved to join the leadership and to radicalize the organization. And so, at the 35th National Elective Conference in 1949, they were elected into the National Executive Committee of the ANC. Oliver Tambo, who was at the time 32 years old, Walter Sisulu, who was as old as the ANC itself at the age of 37, was elected Secretary General. And Dan Krome, who was only 30, was also elected onto the National Executive Committee. At that time, Nelson Mandela was president of the ANC in the Transvaal. This generation of youth leaders once they were elected into the National Executive Committee of the ANC, they benefited from the stalwarts who served together with them, such as J.B. Marx, Moses Kotani, Edwin Tabo Mufutsanyana, to name but a few. Thereafter, they remained in harness and at the helm of the struggle until the organization was unbanned in 1990. Similarly, the generation of Comrade Tabo Masebe, the generation of the Young Lions, were privileged to have been in leadership positions of the youth structures when the 1944 youth leaguers were now the stalwarts of the organization. And so, at the time of the revival of the ANC Youth League, Oliver Tambo addressed the conference of this generation. These stalwarts of the 1940s were proud of the Young Lions and saw in the Young Lions a continuation of their own fire and passions. And therefore, a sense of mutual respect developed. This alone may be said, the generation of comrades Tabo Masebe learned from the best and were mentored by the best and they learned at the knees of the 1944 Youth Leaguers. This is the historical context that shaped Comrade Tabo Masebe. Comrade Tabo Masebe possessed many qualities that cannot be quickly catalogued, but it was hard not to notice that he was warm-hearted and driven, fueled by his innate sense of empathy, love, and dedication for his people. Along with his concern for his fellow comrades and his belief in justice, these attributes defined much of his conduct and his favor for activism, drawing him to the ranks of the liberation movement, affirming his lifelong commitment to the fight against oppression and the ongoing quest to deliver freedom in all its realms to our country. Comrade Tabo, incorruptible in thoughts and deeds, believed with every fiber of his being that the ANC represented the people's greatest hope. And assuming in his demeanor and Consideration for others, Comrade Tabo was appreciated by all for his intellect, hard work, uprightness, 
He was a straight shooter. He radiated warmth and confidence. These qualities, together with his politeness and the patience to listen to other people, perhaps contributed the most in making him one of the most accomplished political communicators in the democratic era. He worked for both the party and the state in that capacity at the highest level. Comrade Tabo was highly effective in the various roles he occupied, earning him wide praise for his professionalism. Comrade Tabo leaves us at a time when his political home, the African National Congress, and our country are facing unprecedented difficulties, as well as the stubborn issues of poverty, unemployment, land hunger, food insecurity, energy insecurity, crime and corruption, to name a few. We, as his extended family, acknowledge that overcoming these difficulties and achieving the renewal of the organization requires unity of purpose, honesty, integrity, humility, and collective responsibility. Because conceit and complacency are the arch enemies of unity. Our history teaches us that renewal is inseparable from the role of the youth in the organization. As we remember Comrade Tabo and all those young lions that have left us, we can feel their rumble and hear their echo. Through these reverberations, we celebrate our young people today and their dynamic power to innovate and inspire. And we invite them to step back in time with us as we revisit a past scarred by terrible events, but also a past laden with lessons. There are no limits to what young people can achieve and do as we learn from history today. We encourage the youth to connect with that which came before, and we embolden them to roar across the landscape of this great continent to lead us from the front. The best way to train young people is to give them responsibility. Failure to do that is nothing but an excuse. That is the least we can do to honor the memory of Comrade Tabo Masebe. Comrade Tabo Masebe was very special because he understood that Mwurwani uh, Ukandra Mufa Achuwana. Once again, we pour out our sympathies and compassion for the family, friends, and colleagues of Comrade Tabo Masebe. May his memory live in the hearts of future generations. Long live the undying spirit of Comrade Tabo Masebe. Long live. Long live. And I thank you for your attention. Thank you. Thank you, uh, former Deputy President of the African National Congress, Comrade Khalema Mutland. Comrades, we also want to acknowledge the presence of various political parties that are here to support us. The IFP, the EFF, ACDP, and other alliance structures that are here. We so wish we had time 
to also allow these formations to speak so that they can also represent their views about Comrade Tabo Masseb. But unfortunately, we are chasing time, but we acknowledge you are present. We also want to acknowledge the presence of the Premier of Limpopo, Ntate Chukuma Tabata, Reale Bogamgolo Arena, or Leri Tehe, and the entire leadership that is here as well from government. We truly, truly appreciate your presence. We want to move with speed and apologies to the family that we are now really chasing time. So I'll call upon Comrade Malusi Kikaba, representing that young lion generation, to come and remove the flag of the African National Congress and it handed over to Comrade Pro Deputy Provincial Secretary of the ANC in Gauteng, Comrade Nomantu Nkomora Luhoko, who will hand it over to the children of Comrade Tabo so that we can close this part of our program and then call on Maduva to render a musical item that will introduce Reverend Frank Chikani who will deliver a sermon. Immediately after Reverend Frank Chikani will then enter the part four of our program, which is the official service. And I'll hand over everything to the leadership of the SAPS. Thank you so much, Comrade Nomantu. Let me call upon Matuva, and I hope the musical team is ready. Remember me. God, I need 
Kaba kana ho ba ne nako e tsamaile. Re tla leka ho e boloka. We'll try our best to save the time. I've already done the greetings and recognitions I must though repeat um, our condolences to the family again. Uh, former president, I can't not recognize you again, Limme. Uh, the Premier of Gauteng, Limpopo, uh, Rea Leboha, and all the dignitaries, officials who are here. If Nekiliko Hai, I would do it the manner, the way we do it at home. And now because I'm in this place, I will not do it that way. I would like to share with you the word that came out of my interaction with the history Yantate Mase. I asked myself the question, what can I say in this send-off service of a gallant soldier of the struggle? A cadre of the movement who represents the best of the generation. You heard them talking about it, the best of that generation, which O.R. Tambo called the young lions of our struggle. The young lion who was part of the generation that defined its mission clearly and was not confused. And I worked with that generation during those days. The generation that was determined that apartheid will not continue. It must end. A generation which helped us we, we, those of us who were part of the formation of the United Democratic Front, uh, having heard what Owar Tambo said, um, I'm sorry to say it uh, in the presence of the police here, so I don't get arrested. Um, we denied that we, we listened to Owar Tambo to set up the United Democratic Front in our treason trial. But this generation helped to make the, gov the country ungovernable. It actually made it totally ungovernable and created a lot of problems for us at that time because it was difficult to survive the Peter, Peter Marisbeck prison trial. Even when we tried to defend ourselves, but um, we had broken so many laws of the apartheid system. We survived, but Delmas did not survive. They ended in prison. The one who, who according to the poem in our program, was always on the march, on the straight and narrow, to serve, to suffer, to sacrifice, even when the dark, saturated cloud Hang, hang inches about, above his head. I will not talk about my encounter, encounters with him, because time does not allow us. In student politics, in youth congress formations, in the United Democratic Front, I worked with him closely when the uh, president Halima Mutante became president there and came with him, and we worked closely with him. 
in the last few days, I spent more time reading every article that was written about him, and mainly from the generation he comes from. During my reading, I also noticed that his generation recalled his history and life as an epitome of what a cadre of the movement is and should be. That's what they say. The tragedy, though, is that he left us, and I quote from the obituary, concerned and sad about the state of his organization. The organization that he grew up in and became his family until his last breath on earth. He said to have openly spoken about the divisions within his organization. I'm not talking about the organization today. Having reflected on his life, the Lord put two verses of the scriptures in my, in my mind. That's John 5, 29 and 35. Verses 29 reads, those who have done good will rise to live. And those who have done what is evil will rise to be condemned. I will not talk about the second part because it's difficult. You know? No one to condemn people. But the important thing is that those who have done good will rise to live. If you don't believe in life after death, his life and history and practice, his exemplary life lives amongst us. Verses 36, 35 says, John was, and where we say John, I will put Tabo, <laughs> Masebe. John was a lamp that burned and gave light. In other versions, it says he was like a burning, blazing, and shining lamp. That's Tabo, as I read him and lived with him and experienced him. And we have enjoyed. I witnessed this week that we enjoyed, actually, we chose for a time to enjoy his light. All the writings about him, it's about his light. He's a lamp that was burning. It kept burning until the last moment. And we, are, we spent time this week to enjoy it. In other versions, it says, you were excited for a time. Um, and the time, it's just for a time. And that's what I want to speak about. And I sit down, just for a time, a while or an hour, I will add uh, for a week for you in this case. You enjoyed his light. I would like to say to you that today, that the scriptures have described this experience as a witness to the people. Masebe was a witness amongst us, spoke amongst us, brings light amongst us, make us enjoy talking about it. But you know, it says just for a while, and I would like before I sit down, to say, I hope, uh, program director, that this is not just for a while. Because we do this in every funeral. We appreciate and revere the lives of people who have come up before us. And then when we leave, after speaking about how this light has shone amongst us, 
was shining and burning, we go and do exactly the opposite of what he was. That's the message. If I, I had a message today is to say to you, we cannot afford to sit in these funerals, appreciate what people have done, you know, extraordinary people. And then having enjoyed it for a while, this text says, just for a while, I would like to urge you, I'm looking for a better word, urge you that we should not enjoy it just for a while. It must be our way of life. We need to move into the future. We need to move into the future and say, we can appreciate the Matambos. We can appreciate the Mandelas. Talk about them. But then when we leave, we go and do something just the opposite of what we talked about. And so, Masebe has spoken to us. We have enjoyed a moment with him. In Daniel 12, 3, and I end, those who lead many to righteousness will shine like the stars forever and ever. Let us lead our people to the correct path which will make the promises of liberation a reality. Let us shine like the stars and bring hope to the people of South Africa, especially the poor and the marginalized. My dear comrade Tabo Maemo Masebe, you're not hearing me now, but your witness has spoken to us. Let your life keep on shining amongst us and give us no peace until we have corrected our ways and lead our people righteously and fulfill the commitment of a better life for all. This is my prayer. And so, God, we pray that you help us against ourselves that we don't enjoy this moment just for a while but that it becomes our way of life and that Masebe's life which we have talked about must be at the back of our minds all the time remind us when we go astray and when we do the opposite of what he stood for. God, when everything fails, we know you are there for us. And I ask you for the sake of the people of this country and for the sake of the poor and the marginalized, I pray that you help us to do that which this revolutionary generation stood for. In your name, amen. As we move to part four, I want to sincerely apologize to the Masebe family. Rishitile Gudisha, Rishitile Lugudisha Nako, Rokopela Tswarelo, Retsepa Retlar Kushisha, Karebuna Le, Batuaba and Chiba Sanichon Rubolel. I want to apologize also to those that were scheduled to speak because of time pressures, we could not call them to come here. Also apologize to the uh, family of the premier. So when we're introducing the premier, we didn't introduce Memakura. 
Tsuarelo Marina. We also want to apologize to the leadership of the church. I know we pressurized you, Murut, but at least you managed to give us the sermon so beautifully. I've got few announcements to make. We advise that not all of us must go to the graveside. And those that, or those that have been identified to go to the graveside, I'm told there is transport that has been allocated to you to utilize that transport. And immediately after the grave service, we are requesting all of you to come back here. Lunch will be served here. I'm also advised that we must leave this place as neat as possible. Those that are in our province, they understand which political party is in charge of this place. We don't want to be accused otherwise when we leave this place. So I'm requested to notify you, please take the bottles, everything that we've utilized, throw it in the bin for peace sake. <coughs> I want to thank you for our cooperation, your understanding. And once more to Masebe family, Tiang Moying, to Comrade Tabu Masebe, go well, big brother. Go well, our loving DG, DG. Go well, Kosi for life. Hopefully, that Kosi will do something beautiful for you over the weekend. I now officially hand over everything. And I want to thank the police for that. I'm now handing everything to Reverend Mashiani on behalf of the South African Police Service to take over part four Realebo. Mordrilem Posho, Roswarelem Banabeshu, Posho Sipilalim Ratish. Swarel. Thank you. I'm now going to request the South African police service members to come and wrap the coffin with the national flag. While busy doing that, I'm going to request the benchers to play a soft music so that when they are done, then we can proceed with our things.
Thank you, the police SAPS colleagues, the former President of the Republic of South Africa, President Helma Mutlante, the Premier of Houting, Mr. David Makura, allow me to call upon the Premier of Houting to come forward and pay the tribute on behalf of the government of the Republic of South Africa. You may be seated. Thank you, Reverend Mashiani, the chaplain of the South African Police Service. Mutsamaishu Wamushumo, O Dirarijing, MEC Banyaza Sufi. Muruti, Reverend Chikani, and members of the clergy, Ntumeleng Kifitiche Tompo, who Bale La Palama Seve, who Melo Kolemitswale, Reri Paleji Gudisha, the Homucha Hosh, the Homucha Mshat. If it is at home, Paul, who Msanda Chirapara Bafamadi Nda, former president Dr. Halima Mutlante and Sisku Gumtlante. Our national ministers and deputy ministers present, the Premier of Limpopo, Premier Matabate, the MECs, the mayors, members of parliament and our legislatures and our councillors here present, the leadership of the ANC, the alliance, and different political parties. The representatives of the Young Lions and the leadership of the ANC Youth League and the former leadership of the ANC Youth League, senior government leaders, DGs who are here, heads of departments, members of the media, attending here today in honor of our DG, Chabo Masebe. Since Monday evening, the 18th of April, there's been an outpouring of condolences, tributes, and many testimonies about the phenomenal and fulfilling life of Chabo Masebe. We are gathered here, convened today by the family. We are here to say our acting DG and chief public servant, the master communicator and the editor in chief is normal. It is indeed a, an honor to speak on behalf of government about this special type of public servant, a true Mandarin who distinguished himself in the service of his nation and its young democracy. Chavo Masebe's presence enriched and improved government's work. It enhanced the quality of governance and service delivery. But his sudden 
An unexpected departure leaves us grief-stricken. And many have said this. We are heartbroken. He leaves a big gap in government and in the ANC for the work that still needs to be done. Because we need good people in government. We need good people in the ANC. We need people with integrity and skills. We need people with commitment. We have been saying as a manner of speaking to the family that we share this pain with you. But if truth be told, it is more difficult for you. Because to you, Butabo was both a pillar of strength to the elders in the family, but a great inspiration to the young ones, to younger generations in the family. But we also know that to his children, to Chami and Mitsepi, it is more difficult for you. You have been very brave this week, and you are very brave today to pay tribute to your dad. Tabo was a pivot around which family festivities and activities revolved. His siblings said so today. Bamsanda Buchirapara said something about Tabo Do Yahulu Ndokuru. And he said, that great elephant has fallen. I would like to borrow from our mother, great struggle veteran, and now our ancestor, Maya Angelo, when she wrote a poem about when great trees fall, and the poem goes, when great trees fall, rocks on distant hills shudder. The lions hunker in tall grass, and even elephants lumber after safety. When great trees fall in the forest, small things recoil into silence, and their senses eroded beyond fear. And when great souls die, the air around us becomes light, rare, and sterile. We breathe briefly. Our eyes briefly see with hurtful clarity. We have seen friends, comrades, members of the family's eyes this whole week. swelling with hurtful clarity and ending tears. That is when great souls die and when great trees fall. Bamsanda, I want to say, even as my Angela says, even the elephants hunger for clarity and the lions, the lions run when great trees fall. So Tabo Masebe was a great tree. Ambassador Gerindo earlier in the week paying tribute to Tabo made reference to the baobab tree. And indeed that is the great tree. So our nation to as we do so, let us keep the entire family in our thoughts 
and in our prayers so that in time they too can find peace and heal. But what is it about Tavo's greatness that we must discover? In the entire week and earlier today, we were indeed hearing stories about Tavo's greatness and the many dimensions of that greatness. And Tower's greatness was not in the noise of his voice or his pom pomposity or big headedness. That all that he did not have, but it was in his quietness and comfort with working in the background to ensure that things get done and sometimes to ensure that others take credit for those things that get done. And many a times, people who, who are appearing on platforms like today would say the things that Tavo wanted said without saying it is by him. And I'm one of those. There are many a times that Tabo got me to say things as if those are my things. And he never took credit. As Renz Mabote said on Thursday in this same hall during the ANC memorial service, Tabo's greatness was his humility and his humanity. That's a deadly combination, his humility and his humanity. And may I add, that there was more combined with that humanity and humility that I'll talk about today. So we are today here to express our gratitude to the family and to Tabo's boys, to this family, to the Masebe family, Rerehuba Famad, we thank you for giving birth and for nurturing, for planting, for nurturing, and for growing this great tree. We hope it's incredible and indelible legacy of tireless involvement in the struggle to better the lives of others and in pursuit of our nation's democratic, transformative and emancipatory agenda, the family will find solace. When you hear the stories you have heard in the entire week, we know that we hope that will help the family to find peace. But we know healing is also a journey. We who encountered Tabo know that he brought really the best traditions of the liberation struggle into his government work. And I really mean the best traditions of the liberation struggle in the sense that Reverend Chikani was talking about, in the sense that President Mtante was talking about, in the sense that the Young Lions and the leadership of the Youth League was talking about. He also brought the best from the traditions of the liberation movement in his relationship with the media. He was no threat to the media. He did not see the media as an enemy. He was always truthful, always humble, hardworking, ethical to the core. And Tavo was bloody competent, but slow. Anyone who has worked with Tavo, I don't know what your experience is, boys. He took time. 
And sometimes we have many people in government and in the ANC who think doing things fast necessarily mean delivering results. Now I know this thing called big and fast results from, is it Malaysia? <laughs> but Tavo was bloody slow. Uh, you give him anything, you know when it is done, it shall be perfect. But you must have patience. And that's Tabo. He placed the interests of the people above everything else. And this is what made the ANC great. Now, I might sound like Donald Trump, but this is really, really so truthfulness, humility, hard work, integrity, ethics, and assigning people tasks based on their competence and preparation. And above all, putting everything, putting the people, the interests of the people above everything else. That's one thing you would never be wrong about Tabo. So he may take time. So you're working on a speech. He may take two, bring it two days later. Very close to deliver. But one thing for sure you know that everything, there's no hidden agenda in Tabo. There was no malice. So Tabo's greatness also lied in understanding why the media is so critical in a democracy. And why government communication is so important that the government can't blame the media for bad publicity. The government must be organized, Madiba, uh, to tell its own story. But Tabo also understood that it, is, it serves a democracy for government and the media to have a sound relationship so that we can have an informed citizenry and an active citizenry and government can be held accountable. Tabo understood that. That was his partnership with the media. But Masebe's greatness also lied in his deep understanding of ANC policy and his ability to explain things in very simple terms. His greatness was also his intellectual stamina to debate everything and everything for long hours. If you didn't have time, don't start a debate with Tabo. For long hours, the, the guys in the media know to explain things slowly and take time and engage with everything, including those deadly opposed to his views. But his greatness also lied in maintaining a very healthy relationship if you disagree today or you have had a very heated in the nature of politics, a very heated argument and discussion with Tower. Tomorrow is tomorrow. It is done. He bared no grudges. In his standard approach, he eschewed empty phrase mongering and slogans so he will if you throw something that does not make sense he will say so okay so what does that mean premier how are we going to explain what you are saying so first explain it to me because i must go and explain it he eschewed rhetoric rhetoric just throwing stuff there without thinking about what it really means he was slow. And his greatness lied in his simplicity and clarity of thought. Particularly in public discourse in and in political communication. So in typical must service style, if you can't explain it to a young child, you don't know what you are talking about. 
He set a gold standard for many young government communicators that you must always be truthful and factual. You must be transparent and proactive, especially when you work with the media. So he believed in what the Chinese say, that you must always seek truth from the facts. And Tabo demonstrated impeccable integrity, particularly in a world characterized by so-called alternative truths. There was only one truth for Tabo. Uh, if you have messed up, you have messed up. And you must own up. He is not going to do the work of spinning and explaining the inexplicable. Inexplicable. That's, so if, he, if you can't pronounce it with Tabo, why should he pronounce it? <laughs> and why do you write it if you can't? If you have the numbers that are too long there, why don't you write them in words? So don't write a million there which you can't read. You must write it one million. But Tabo was also a man of structure, process, and method. He was very structured. I don't know what the experience is as the family. He didn't just do things spontaneously. He was very structured. And he was very organized and consistent in asking the same questions. Every time we had to we had to write a speech or write a statement or write a policy document. There were five questions that Tawo will ask. You know when you prepare the first draft uh, that's going to be ed edited. There are many, you know, there are speech writers here and communicators. The first draft. So Tawo is going to ask always these questions. What are you trying to communicate and who are you communicating to? So, what are the key messages? The communicators will say. So, if you're not clear what the key messages are, don't, don't even start. When the key messages are clear, you, you can now discuss the speech and you have to debate the key messages. Is that really what you want to say? And then you would say, so what is the theme? But are all these things that, that are in here truthful and factual, can they be verified? Are there also people other than you who can confirm that these things you are saying are true? They are not only in your head. And perhaps most importantly, does this message deal with the fundamental issues of concern to the people? Because communication must always be about the people. And policy must always be about the people. That's the fourth thing he would ask. And lastly, how are we going to enlist other stakeholders? Tabo was a, a bloody good stakeholder manager. And many were managed without knowing that they are being managed. How are we going to to mobilize others around this. So when you have answered what are the key messages, what is the theme, when you have answered all those, is this factual and truthful? Does this under address the fundamental issues? You must look for the stakeholders. So who else should we mobilize? He was, a, he was a very good organizer. Who else should we enlist to this? Before you even speak, before you even issue a statement, who else should be mobilized? So Tavo's greatness was in his discipline and his method. In dealing with government communication and dealing with government administration and policy. But the man was slow, as I said. And you have to just come to accept. You know, so DG, when can we get that? And I must report to Tavo before Easter, he said to me, Premier, I'll give this to you after Easter. 
And when he passed on, he was working on something that he wanted to give to me after Easter. And it has to do with the appointment, a process uh, of the appointment of a head of department of health. And I must say, Tavo, we got, we got that work, all that work done. So even as you were sitting, as Florence called me at home, as he was sitting on his chair peacefully and he, but his work was done. The file was ready and that HOD of health was appointed. This week during, during the period of mourning. And he had said to me, I'll bring you this file premier after, immediately after Easter. And it was done. So we are very grateful to the Masebe family. But there's something about Tabo and communication. He was a professorial enigma to young communicators. He has a professorial, and I mean, but by this I mean, he has, everything he said to these young communicators in government, they did and it worked for them. And the, yeah, the government communicators in our province loved DG Masebe, and they respected him enormously. The media has already spoken for itself they had a very good and sound relationship with him. But Masebe was not just a communicator. He was a true Mandarin. And somebody who made a great contribution in practice to what is truly a, a special type of public servant in practice. And I would like to say that I have dreamt a few times about the day that Tavo will be able to join the National School of Government to go and train government communicators and civil servants generally nationwide on the art of communication and building strong and sound relations with the media, but just also on how just to be a good public servant. And he left us before he could do something so profound because the National School of Government is very important for our democracy, is very important for our government. We need the training of our public servants. We need the training of public officials. We must go to school, ministers, MECs, uh, premier. We must go to school, it, mayors, Counselors, it must be permanent. And that's the mark of a true cadre. A president Clante spoke about that. So Tabo also understood the teething problems of government regarding lack of implementation and the, path, path, the pathologies of administration, such as problems of incompetence, uh, corruption, and just failure to follow up on things that have been announced. One thing about him is that he, he worked in Gauteng with the Premier Shiloh, went to work at national government with President Mklante, worked at Tuli House with President Mbeki. Tabo knew the ins and outs. One, Tabo was a very good storyteller. So for every policy, he knew when did it start. President Becky said this about this, and then they, this was introduced. In the province, it's the same. This premier, this was introduced. He was a working archive. Every government policy. The good thing, though, he would say, if we want to change because this has not worked, we just need to know why did it not work. Before we introduce, because sometimes we know in government, ANC people like to introduce new things. It's almost like fashionable. You know, you must always introduce new things without even an evaluation of the others. So Tabo was very careful, but he was very respectful. He'll talk to you very nicely. 
when he thinks, no, you don't understand that issue. And I always, there are MECs here, always, and, and, and DG, DG, DG Baleni and, and senior managers in my office, I always insisted that I need to hear a Tabo. He wouldn't raise a hand. Uh, I always insisted, I need to hear what Tabo is going to say. And when he says that he'd take long and give a story, he was getting old. He was becoming a very good storyteller. <laughs> and many a times he'll start with the story of President Ntlante. You know, President Ntlante has told us this story we were traveling. But he wants to tell his own story. And you could hear that he's aging. Every discussion he starts with a story. And you know it's going to be long. So, many a times he would say to me, Age hey, Premier, these people, I don't know why they are getting such a simple thing wrong. What are they trying to do which will discredit this government? So when you discuss with him, D DG, there's this thing going so that he can say, Age hey, Premier, these people, you know when Tabo says these people, you must just know that those people are on his wrong side. And wrong side in terms of doing the right things and doing things right. So we are eternally grateful to the Masebe family for this emblematic figure. In our, in our administration, in government, and in our country. There are many things where you can see Tabo's mark. In our initiatives in Gauteng. In Teresano program. Tabo gave this community outreach program the name. Now I, so it's called Nteresano. So it's like Imbizo, community outreach program. And it is Tabo who named it Nteresano. So work together. Today I understood. So Tabo has got some lineage in understanding the language. Abshe. Abshe in Bagaina. Now I understand why. He had, he had such fluency of, he's got that, the roots there. He was part of many developments of new ideas, including how to make sense of those. The open tender system. These ideas will start somewhere else. The township economic development, it will start somewhere else. But Tabo will get us to make this clear and address his five questions. So we can communicate these ideas. But he was also part of managing difficult issues in our province. And as the obituary says, life as a demanding tragedy. The PPE corruption. He was very central on how these things must be dealt with, with a great deal of honesty and truthfulness and a great deal of empathy. Let's face the problem when there is a problem. Let's not dodge it. So his greatness was really that he was forthright and really firm in pointing out malafide motives. Tabo was a very reluctant administrator. He loved just staying in the communication. And I came to understand why is he so reluctant with administration, acting DG, and get, said, no, you know, you know, Premier, I have a mistrust of the bureaucracy and civil servants. They are always up to something. He had this, in, he says, let me mistrust. So, if I'm in charge of the administration, I'm likely to sign a document that puts me in trouble. Because someone down there had hatched out a plan and make it appear nice, and then brought it to me to sign, and I must take accountability when I've signed it. That, those are some of the pathologies of administration and government, which we... He was very keen to sort them out. So our acting DG, master communicator and editor-in-chief is gone. But Tabo was not just a civil servant. Many speakers have said, like James A. Baldwin argues, he was a man of his time, circumstance, history, and that's what made him, but he was more than that. And all of us are more than that. So he was shaped by that generation of young lions 
and the youth leaders who fought ferocious battles. He was a student activist who rose to the highest ranks of Azazo, Psycho, and the Youth League. And Jerindo, Lulu Johnson, Malusi Gigaba, and Phoebe Potkite today and earlier in the week testified about how dependable and trusted Tabo was amongst the death defiers, the young lions. I met Tabo at Tefluop. And what was he doing there? He was going around helping students who needed a bursary from the EAP with Reverend Ngoman. And I must say today to our, the Masebe family and to the youth leakers and the young lions, I was one of the beneficiaries when I, when I was at Teflu of, of Tabo's Bazari. Because you are talking about these people he helped. Tabo always wants evidence. Where are they? You say, I help them. Where are they? Why don't they tell the story themselves? I am one of them. I was a student activist there. And he did many. Go, he was going around doing that. Uh, Joe Matebula would, would testify to this. So I would like to conclude by saying, we, in Tabo we had a true cadre. The public service has lost a dedicated cadre of a special type of a public servant. And I know sometimes, even in the ANC, this word CADA is a swear word. And we want to accept that, no, CADA is wrong. No. A CADA and a public service, this get used in the army, it gets used in the police, in other systems, it gets used in the civil service. A CADA is not someone given a job they can't do because they know nothing about, because they were appointed, because they know somebody. That's not a CADA. A CADA is someone properly prepared, prepared for, with very specific skills, equipped and given assigned responsibilities until they are equal to that task where they are deployed. There must always be preparation. There must always, yes, some of it is specialized training depending on where you are going to be deployed. If you are, if you are in the police, okay, you can't have somebody at the next rank when they've not been prepared for that rank. So this thing called CADA deployment, which is being discredited, is actually CADA misdeployment. It's the misdeployment, and that thing called CADA is the corrupted, it's the corruption of the word CADA. It's not a swear word. A CADA is always about somebody equipped, prepared, trained, experienced, and assigned the task that they are equal to. So that is a CADA. So I'm sure Tabo could explain this. Tabo, I'm using the word CADA today. I've tried to explain it here. You must be satisfied. And if Tabo is not satisfied, I'm in trouble. So, I would like to conclude by returning to Maya Angelo. And in the last stanza of the great tree has fallen, she says, when great souls die after a period of peace blooms slowly and always irregularly. Spaces fill with a kind of soothing electric vibration. Our senses are restored, never to be the same. Whisper to us, they existed, they existed. We can be and be better for they existed. We are better people because Tabo existed. We, we emerged from 
the dark ages of apartheid because Tabo existed. And we can be better. Our country can even be better. We can be better people ourselves. Our movement can be better. And trust among citizens and government can be restored. Peace, social justice, and genuine equality can be achieved. Corruption can be ended. A better future for our children and an economy that serves the interest of all can be, built, can be built. May the peace of the period of peace and healing and renewal bloom in the family of Nasebe. Farewell, DG. You have run your race. Robalaka Hotso. Go. Big tree. A great soul. Realebo. Nah. Reale boha mo premier ka manzo a hotato kina juale siri pichile mo sepicho marona rito kapa le solarona hoya le tulai la bofelo meki kwe taka tle china kito bita all the poor bearers from the state SAPS to come forward and take their position, followed by the bearers from the South African Police Service, also to come forward and take their, their space, and then requesting the marshalling officer, S. Mukise, to tell us more about this final as to from here, where do we go, and what is expected from us. Thank you. Uh, to the reverence present here, the family, the former president, uh, President Mutlante, the premier, MECs present here, all protocol observed. I'm Lieutenant Colonel Mkise. I will be the marshalling officer of the day of this procession here. I'll request that uh, during the procession, this is how we are going to, to form up. It will be, part A will be the leading detachment followed by the reverend followed by the guard of honor followed by the barriers as well as the pole barriers we therefore ask that with your respect to the family that we request two vehicles from the family that will be following the hearse because of the procedure or the, proce the procession that is too long for the marshalling officer to be audible to the guard of honor 
we will request that the two vehicles from the family will follow. I was told that you are going to use the door on my left. Uh, so I request that the chief mourner, our former president, will be following the procession when we leave here with the family as well as our premier. I thank you. Our bearers will be Warrant Officer Molife. Warrant Officer Nkonzo. Warrant Officer Lituaba. Warrant Officer Tamai. Warrant Officer Sibuyi. Warrant Officer Mtungwa. Warrant Officer Mchabi. And Warrant Officer Msimango. Bearers, take your positions. Our poll bearers will be Brigadier Litonyane. Brigadier Chibenga Brigadier Makamata Brigadier Mtsweni. Brigadier Mtotoba.
porque a dia é macaúra. Police peras, you can join the pol peras.